Hi everyone, this is Shanti Amos with the Youth Environmental Program, and today we're gonna to talk about pH and what pH is and why it's important when we talk about water. And to help us do that today, we have Doug Amos, who is my husband, and he has been in the water industry for over 30 years, so he was the perfect person to help us understand pH and, and what we wanna to study today. So can you tell us what pH is? Yes, pH is, is a measure of, of alkalinity or acidity in water. Scientifically speaking, if you looked it up, it would be a measure of the amount of hydrogen ions in water. But in general terms, when we talk about pH, you'll hear it expressed as whether something is alkaline or whether it's acidic. Anything that is above a pH of seven is alkaline or base. Base or alkaline are inter interchangeable terms that people use regularly. Anything with a pH of less than seven would be considered acidic. Okay, so when we talk about water, what is the perfect pH? What are you looking for? Well, I don't think that we can say that there's any such thing as a perfect pH. A, a pristine water, if you will, would have a pH of seven. Our bodies, most natural organisms, uh, the environment tends to uh, gravitate towards a pH of neutral or seven. Uh, as we talk about what would be the perfect pH for a drinking water, again, there's no such thing as perfect, but the EPA recommends that, that water purveyors distribute water through their system so that when we turn on the tap, the, uh, the pH of that water would be between 7.5 and 8.5, in other words, slightly alkaline, uh, which is good for our bodies, it's good for the pipes and the distribution system. Uh, in the environment, we know, especially those of us who have uh, been in West Virginia, acid mine drainage, for instance, is, is harmful to the environment. And again, because the environment just naturally gravitates towards a pH of 7. It's not to say that everything, that all, all living organisms, that every ecosystem, 7 would be a perfect pH, but as a general term, that, that level of, of neutrality is, is what the environment and what our bodies like to see. So you mentioned acid mine drainage. Can you elaborate on what that is? Sure, acid mine drainage has been a, a real problem, especially in a state like West Virginia where we have so many coal mines you know, over the decades and centuries. Uh, as a coal mine goes into the earth, subsurface extraction of minerals, it's not only coal that is disrupted. As part of that process, we disrupt whether it's, there could be uh, limestone, sandstone, but there are also sulfide materials within the earth. Again, naturally present and not a problem, but when those sulfide minerals are disturbed and come into contact with water, the pH will drop to below seven, hence the term acid mine drainage. Sometimes uh, it can go really low on the pH scale, very harmful to the environment. When you say it's harmful to the environment, what would be the byproduct of that? So again, uh, the environment and most, not all, but most ecosystems tend toward a neutral pH. Again, it might be eight, it might be, but that's sort of the base. So when you start talking about waters that may have a pH of three or four, well, the layperson may say, well, a pH of seven is, is neutral. What's the big deal with a pH of three? But what's not realized though is that uh, a pH of six is 10 times more acidic than a pH of seven. A pH of five, is a hundred times more acidic than a pH. So it's a tenfold increase as you go down the line. And so you can see that a pH of four then <clears throat> would be 10 times 10 times 10 or a thousand times more acidic per unit than a pH of seven. And so as this is discharged into local waterways, the effects can be anything from discoloration to dropping the pH in a receiving stream to the point that trout or other fish or other habitat cannot reproduce. Uh, worst case scenario we have seen throughout the years, fish kills uh, that, uh, that can occur when the pH drops low enough that adult uh, fish will actually die. Okay, so to measure pH, I know you have a probe here that you're gonna explain how that works. Sure. And so this is an example too, if, if we had students who were interested in being a citizen scientist, mm -hmm because several high school students I know will go monitor streams and collect data for different watershed groups around the state. So can you explain to us a little bit, this is the probe they would use when they go to a stream. Why could they not collect the water and just bring it home to be tested? Well, you could, but the EPA also uh, designates uh, the procedures at which you have to uh, collect samples, holding times on those samples. So the problem with pH 
is that it only has an EPA approved holding time of 15 minutes. So that would be fine if you could collect a sample and then get it back to your home or your laboratory or to the car or wherever you have uh, your testing equipment. But these days, you know, pH probes like this are portable, they're battery powered, they're readily available. You mentioned the citizen scientists. I did the kind of the equivalent of that when I was in high school, and, th and this is where it gets cool. When you can get out into the environment, when you're actually uh, going down and testing the pH of a pond or a local waterway or a sampling point that's been designated to you, and then you can see after a, a, uh, a rainfall that, that uh, is affected by an AMD site that that pH indeed does go down. And so these are just really simple uh, and relatively inexpensive these days. And, and so, like on this unit, again, portable, battery powered, we simply turn it on. Now, we've already gone through a calibration process. We might do that in another video. But <clears throat> over here, Shanti, we have tap water. So we'll just drop that down in very quickly to the tap water and it will stabilize. And I know you probably can't see this, but 7.35, that's still migrating. So we'll call that 7.55. So tap water from the tap behind us. So just for fun, I've, I've put some soda okay. uh, just that we've all had, nothing exotic, just a, just a local cola, if you will. We'll drop the probe down into the cola. Now remember, as we're waiting for this to stabilize, that a pH of six is 10 times more acidic than a pH of seven. pH of five was how many more times? A hundred, tenfold. So a pH of four, a thousand. A pH of three, 10,000 times. This unit is still stabilizing, Shanti, but the, the reading that it looks like it's gonna settle in on is 3.25-ish. Wow, so our bodies really are not equipped to handle that level of acid? Uh, I don't know, we're equipped to handle it, otherwise, oh, otherwise as much soda as, as we, right. as, as we especially right. in America, tend to drink it around the world. Uh, our bodies can react to that, but we're going to do another demonstration that I didn't tell you about that really will show you how the body reacts to that. So if we take in a, a, a liquid like this, it's at 3.3, 3.2, the body will immediately recognize that and the stomach will begin <clears throat> pumping counteractant to that. Okay. That will neutralize that pH and that's what goes on in our stomach. So with that, we're just going to pull this over a little closer to the camera and... <clears throat> So again, this is baking, baking soda. soda. Yeah. So a few minutes ago, we mentioned caustic soda, soda ash. We mentioned uh, hydrated oh, lime. Training. So these are all bicarbonate type products. Now I should have grabbed a something to stir with. And so you can see with just that little bit of, of baking soda. Let me give it a little stir here. And that was just just a, wow. just a touch. What's it say now? 6.24. So that's exactly what the body does. We ingest a soda, the body recognizes, wow, that's really a low pH. We're equipped to deal with that in that the body reacts to it. I can't mm -hmm. say most articles that I've read would indicate that really we should steer clear of of soda or at the very least drink it in moderation but the point is is that as we can see now that that's had a couple minutes we're at 6.75 and that was just and that mirrors the treatment of acid mine drainage exactly so what would happen there again we have to uh, picture the out of doors a, a mining site can be enormous hundreds of acres in, in some cases and so the runoff water that's coming out of the mine and off of the mine site would be collected into large ponds where it could be treated. And the, the main treatment within that would be to raise the pH up to an acceptable level before it's discharged into a local waterway. But that's exactly what happens in the stomach. That's exactly what happens in, in an AMD treatment site. And that's exactly what happens naturally, by the way, around the world. When we look at our ecosystems, they have natural buffering characteristics to them. But when we disrupt the environment, such as through subsurface mining, we can overwhelm the environment's ability to naturally and quickly take care of that issue. So we have to come in and, and do something like this. So I thought that was a great explanation of what pH is and how we monitor it. I want to thank you for helping us during this class. You're um, welcome. I liked all the hands-on illustrations. 
If any of you are interested in becoming involved in the Youth Environmental Program, please look us up at dep.wv.gov. And that we also are involved with the watershed groups around the state. And this is a great opportunity to get involved in stream monitoring. And you can use one of these probes yourself and learn more about pH in your local areas. Thanks for joining us.